So as you can see, we're starting off now, we're starting off at the bottom of the joint, and what we're doing is we're walking up the, we're going to walk the cup this time, instead of doing freehand, as it's 6G, it's a very difficult position. So when we talk about 6G, all we mean is that the pipe is stuck up in a 45 degree horizontal position. So the aim of this is to make sure that we get fusion into both sides of the route, which is a V prep, ensuring that we get a keyhole walking up. As you can see there, you can see the keyhole appearing. Just something very quickly, if there's any type of world that you guys want us to do, please pop it in the comments below and we'll look to do that. So some important points when we're doing a route run is to keep the keyhole open at all times. Do not let it close, because if it closes, it means you might not penetrate through. The second point is to ensure that we're consistently dipping the same amount of wire into our pool whilst feeding it into both edges. If all is running smoothly, you should see it penetrating through like this. So because we're working on mild steel, it's a bit more forgiving than stainless steel. So if this was stainless steel, because of the amount of heat you're putting into the material, the gap would close very rapidly. So we're now coming to the end of our route run. We're coming underneath our bridge tack, and this is the finished result of the route. So this sets us up nicely for our second run, which is known as the hot pass. A hot pass run is known as a reinforcement run. So essentially what you're doing is you're laying an extra layer of protection on top of your route. So at certain points on the world, like now, it's especially difficult to come up the hill. So I'm talking around 5 o'clock. If you imagine a clock, about 5 o'clock going up towards 2 o'clock, because you're going uphill, it's very, very difficult. So gravity is constantly pulling you down. So it slows you down a tiny bit. This is also the reason why we're using a sharp angle to push it up the hill. So to ensure that you don't overheat the pool, you counteract this by adding a slightly bit more wire, which cools your pool. So we're making our way up the opposite side of the pipe now, ensuring that we get a nice even hot pass throughout the joint. So a quick visual check to ensure that our hot pass is in both sides of the plate and it's fused in and we're good to go. So what we're doing now is we're making our way up the pipe. And the sole aim of this run, this is called the flushing run, we're trying to get enough material into the joint just to bring us before flush, which means just before the edges. So we're leaving ourselves onto our last run, which is our capping run. Sometimes we see people going what's known as no man's land, which is when you cap it under flush and you don't put enough material in. So to ensure this isn't happening, I'm constantly looking at my side walls to make sure that I'm fusing in, adding enough material and ensuring that it's got the same leg length throughout, whilst ensuring that the throat size is also the same height, so that we do not end up in no man's land. Okay, so now we've just made our way from 6 o'clock all the way up to 12 o'clock clockwise. And in a second, we're going to start at 6 o'clock, move our way around anti-clockwise, which is on the right-hand side, all the way to the top. So as you can see, when I'm moving anti-clockwise, I always hit a sticking point, like I said earlier, around 5 o'clock, moving up. That's just... If any of you have ever done 6G welding, that's where you're the most uncomfy, I find, because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, it'll be the opposite way around. When you guys are welding, it can be 6G or any type of welding. What's the most uncomfy position for you? Let me know in the comments down below.
Okay, so now we're coming towards the end of our flushing run. So if this has been done correctly, this will set us up nicely onto the capping run. If this has not been done correctly, this will leave us under flush. But as we can see from this photo, we've got a good base to start our capping run. Okay, so we're now moving on to the last run, which is the capping run. So this is the bit that people are going to see by their eye. So this is the bit you want to take a bit more time and care over. So we're now making our way towards the end of our capping run for our 6G welded joint. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Also, very shortly, you'll see up here on your screen one of our other videos if you want to go and check them out if you like this one. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to share your tips on how you complete this type of joint in the comments below. We look forward to seeing them.